huge pleasure to be here um, and with such an awesome community. Um, I've kind of been involved in the WordPress community for, uh, I would say, seven to eight years now. Um, it's hard, Noel's been to like 20 WordCamps, so I can't even touch that, but I've been to 12, um, kind of all across the states and, and Europe, uh, and, and you guys have a special thing going here. Um, it's really cool to be a part of this. Um, my laptop isn't working. <coughs> um, so, one kind of thing that threw me on a loop, I came, I came uh, kind of, Noel told me not to say this, but I'm saying it anyway. Um, I came here kind of to, to co-work with Noel and, and kind of do some human-made stuff um, and, and to give a workshop. And uh, at the last second, I kind of got asked to talk and I'm giving this presentation. Um, so it's not as an excuse as if it's horrible, like that's my excuse. Um, just, just putting it out there um, that, that I kind of, you know, why I thought of this kind of talk. Um, I think the hardest thing at a work camp is to give a talk. I, I had a workshop before too, which was actually supposed to be after this, and this whole talk is supposed to be my go to my workshop, but now it's backwards. Um, but I think the hardest thing to do at a at a um, at a work camp or a WordPress meetup or really anything in this kind of industry, um, in these kind of events, is to to talk about something that all of you guys can kind of to kind of you know take away something because we have, you know you can have surveys, you can have you know you can ask. You could have multiple previous work camps, and every time you have a work camp or a meetup or a conference, it's like the audience is always so diverse. Um, so it's really hard to, I mean, you can, you, can, you can give a talk on a lot of different things, but they're usually niche things. And I usually try to, to, try to, to, to give something or to talk about something that all of you guys can kind of take away and apply to what you guys do in every aspect of your job, um, whether it be design, whether it be development, whether it be project management, whether you're running a business and doing a lot of you know, uh, proposals and stuff like that. So. Um, again, I've kind of been working um, with this stuff for a while now, and I just really want to um, be able to, to give you guys something, you know, kind of my thoughts on, on, on the, the topic of remote working and what I've learned. Um, a little bit about myself. Who am I? Uh, my name is Scott Baskard. Um, there's my Twitter handle. I don't really tweet anything cool, so I don't even know why I have that there. <laughs> I just want followers. I don't know. It's a cool thing to do, right? Um, I'm a project manager at, at Human Made. I started working at Human Made um, in April. Um, my, lead, my lead role there is a project manager. Um, awesome team. You heard a lot about what we do from, from Noel. Um, we're kind of, I guess, you know, well represented here. <laughs> um, uh, so you've, I don't really have to say anything about Human Made. Um, previously worked at um, these companies. Um, and why I put this here is kind of my. Uh, I don't know, sometimes it's kind of something that bothers me that I'm like, I'm pretty well rounded, like I've done, like I feel like I'm a jack of all trades, master of none uh, kind of thing. I've, I've worked at a lot of different kind of companies. I worked for WebDev Studios back in 2008, 2009, um, doing just WordPress consulting, consulting work. And that was a, you know, that was both a job that I worked in an office and I also worked remote. Um, and that was kind of what, what got me into what I do with WordPress. Um, and from there, I got this like what I thought at the time was like the best job job offer. Uh, uh, you know, anyone at my age of, of 21 was working at uh, Time Inc. in New York City for EntertainmentWeekly.com. Um, they were like they had 10 blogs at the time on WordPress.com with the highest traffic, high, highest visited sites on WordPress on WordPress.com. Um, and and uh, it was a really cool opportunity. What kind of killed that for me was the fact that I worked in a traditional office and it sucked so bad. Um, so that's why that's bold. Um, again, my talk is more about traditional offices, why they suck, and why remote working has been like the best thing for me. Um, it kind of gets you guys to kind of maybe think about it and how you can apply it maybe even to your, your jobs uh, in an office. Um, then I did freelance for a little bit, I was remote, and then I worked at another office. I don't, long story short, like short, I moved to Norway, and I needed to find a job, so I took a job at another office, and it sucked so bad. It was the worst thing ever. Um, then I found Wu Themes, which was, the opposite of that, really amazing company to work with. I worked with Blue Themes for two years. I'm sure you guys obviously know who they are. Um, and now I'm working at Human Made, a remote again. Um, so kind of my, my whole talk again today is going to be on kind of my thoughts on remote, remote working and how they can help you. I like to include a picture of my, my family. It's kind of hard to travel, um, travel far away from home. I'm pretty far from home. I just had a kid. He turned a year, and it's been, uh, it's been hard to be away, but I'm having a great time here. And... Um, this is where I live, it's beautiful. I mean, Cape Town's beautiful, but it's also beautiful where, where I live. Um, the problem is it probably looks something like this right now. <laughs> um, this is actually like, I know there's a lot of meanwhile in blank, but meanwhile in Norway's are like the most funny, I think. And not because I'm the region, like there's a lot of really weird stuff that happens in Norway. Um, and this is like a perfect, I mean, this is, this is remote working. This, how remote, 
can I be? <laughs> um, cool. So, so what is remote working? Um, let's first talk about, you know, about, I mean, everyone probably knows what it is or has their own idea about what it is, but I guess if I asked you what it is, I mean, you guys would probably say a lot of different things. Um, again, this is more about what remote working is to, to me um, and, and kind of uh, why I like it and why I see it being, you know, being such a... a such an amazing thing and why it works for so many companies, you know, especially in our industry. Um, so there, there are a number of ways um, to describe uh, remote working. I think this is a good representation of it. It's usually um, working from, most people think home. I think that's used to, to common. Like, I don't think it needs to be home. It's like a weird, weird thing, right? So I don't find remote working from home really the best thing for me. It's really a location other than the traditional office. And I think that's something you should focus on. It's like just working somewhere other than the traditional office. And that can be your office, right? That doesn't have to be home or remote or a coffee shop. So if I say remote working, I really want you to think of it as, as being this, you know, working somewhere other than the traditional office. Because the tradi traditional office sucks. And, I, and I've experienced it. <coughs> Um, so these are some things that you might find if I said, you know, in, 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 in the crowd here, like, what, what is uh, remote working? Some alternative names, you know, working from home, cloud working, telecommuting, uh, virtual working, or mobile working. Um, kind of a cool statistic, and, and um, some American study was, was recently done, and it's four out of ten companies have, have the option to work remote. Um, I would love to see that number go up. I'm just curious how many of you guys are, are uh, working remotely? Awesome. How many of you guys are in an office that has the option to work remotely? Uh, weird question to ask, but how many of you guys are just working in a regular traditional office? So high high uh, respect for that. <laughs> I think it's awesome. It's a play. I, again, I don't want to knock on, knock on that. Not for me, um, but it could be. Um, so, uh, and, uh, so four out of ten companies have the option to work remote. Another thing that they said in the study was that you know workers log more hours um, when they when they work or when they have the option to, to work uh, from you know outside the office, which is a cool cool statistic. Um, and workers who who work remotely are, are more engaged. Um, so let's let's talk about uh, what when I say remote working to like my family or people at home or people on the streets, and then I think they have this common like idea of this is what I'm doing, right? Like, where's this guy get power? Like, I didn't see a screen with the glare. That's like the worst problem, right? How do you do that? I think Noel does this. Do what? This. Sometimes. Um, so I don't think it's that. Um, like, I wish it was that. <laughs> I don't know if, if Magnus was here, he's probably like, you know what Magnus does, like salmon fishing in the Norwegian rivers. Magnus works for Blue Themes, and he, uh, I think that's what he does. Uh, he's here. Um, so this is a picture of my office working remote. Um, this is home. Um, and again, so something I can talk about too, like a lot of struggles that you will find working remote. So I just had a kid a year ago, and working here at home, uh, when my kid is now running around, so working from home and remote is like now the worst thing for me. <laughs> And I love my son, it's just really, it's really hard, and I don't know if you guys are struggling with that. So, so, so this could be remote working, right? It could be. Um, and, and maybe something like this, like a co-working space. Um, or this could be your company's office, like if it's designed right, um, has the right environment, like this could be remote working as well. <clears throat> so let's talk a little bit about, you know, why remote working works, why people think it works, why I think it works. Um, again, I think the whole, the whole idea of remote working isn't new anymore. Like, uh, when I lived in the States, uh, I don't know, it went automatic started and they started doing it. People thought they were crazy for doing it. Like all these companies are doing it. And it's, I think it's a proven concept, like it, it works, right? So it, it's not, a, I'm not, I don't have to sell anything or pitch anything to you guys about remote working or why it works. Um, just, I guess, kind of things, you know, why I think it works. Um, and maybe it is new to you guys. Maybe it's something you guys can apply here in South Africa. I think one of the things I found out about Cape Town is like the, the options you guys have here to kind of, to be, uh, I don't know, just the community here, even with co-working spaces and, and community and like the whole tech scene here is amazing. So I don't have that. So this is again, really kind of my, my experience. Uh, and I wish that I had a lot of the stuff that you guys do have here. So let's talk about um, kind of like the right, the right environment. Um, the, the proper environment, I think for, for remote working, like if, if you don't have these things um, kind of set in place, I don't think remote working is gonna work. Um, so 
There's an amazing TED talk um, that I'm going to steal most of his information about because it's amazing. And a confession is like, you know, I should have said this in the beginning. Um, weird thing to say again, too, is I'm, I'm not a public speaker. Um, I'm, I'm passionate about community. I'm passionate about WordPress. And I'm passionate about, like, helping others. Um, and this is, uh, this is kind of why I'm giving this talk. I'm not selling anything. I'm just trying to help you guys. I think WordPress and, and WordCamps is all about... Um, Knowledge is sharing, so like uh, take take advantage of that. I said it in my workshop before. Like definitely take advantage of being here and, and all of these people here and your community here in South Africa and Cape Town. Like um, share knowledge, and that's what I'm doing here and now. And, and I don't know how many of you guys have, have watched this talk, this TED talk. Amazing, right? So there was like a couple hands. So if if you haven't seen it, definitely watch this, and I'll, I'll kind of give you some 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 things that he says. Um, so one of the questions he he starts the talk. Um, off with is, is where do you go, he kind of just, he brings up the question, where do you go to be productive? And that's not necessarily a question like, you don't have to apply exactly to work, but anything that you do in life that, that you kind of need to do something, where do you go to be productive, right? Um, I could ask the question here in the crowd, um, I'll just kind of guess what the answers will be. Um, so yeah, where do, you, where do you go when you want to get something done? And typical answers are something like, he says, you know, uh, a place or a room, right? A moving object. You know, a specific point in time. <clears throat> Some things like, you know, I, I, the sun is a problem. Who said the sun? The glare in the sun, like in this kind of situation, is, is a big issue. Um, you have stuff like the porch, the kitchen, the next room in the basement. It's too fast, sorry. Um, nothing really to say. Uh, coffee shop, <laughs> the library, right, the train. Uh, hard to work. Uh, this is, I, I, I can't work on the train and plan. I don't know why there's two options. Like, I can't even fit my legs in the, on the plane, so, like, let alone pull a laptop. Um, it doesn't work, so. But to be productive, I guess more of, like, the thought, the thought side of things. Like, you can get a lot done um, with, with the kind of space you need on a plane or a train. Um, and then you have the things like the time stuff. So he goes on to say, like, a common, end, common thing is, like, uh, I, I'm the most productive or I get the most done early in the morning, right? How many of you guys are morning people and, and kind of can think in the morning? I'm not that. Um, that's awesome. Um, and then you have late at night, that's me. Who's late at night? Joel, where are you? <coughs> I, I can like, I don't know, for some reason I can think like really clear and get so much done in a very short period of time at night. Um, maybe because now like my kid is sleeping and I just, no distractions. And it really comes down to that kind of stuff. And they say weekends too, like weekends. Who wants to work weekends and be productive on the weekends? A lot of people do. Um, because you have, you know, you feel like you are the most productive on the weekends. And typically, like he says, like, why don't, why don't you ever hear, never, like, the office? Isn't that weird? Like, the, the office is a place where you're supposed to get work done, and nobody ever says the office for being productive. It's a really cool talk. Um, so you definitely have to see that. Um, and, and kind of why, why I think that and why, why you know, Jason, Jason Fried from, from 37 Signals, which is now Basecamp, thinks that is that the work day, you know, at the office or the traditional office, I think that maybe a lot of you guys have kind of, been able to, to see like the trends and, and, and the, the advantages of kind of this stuff and applied it to your, you know, your office life, is that the typical day at the office is kind of just like a bunch of interruptions, right? So you're like, you're torn apart from, from being productive, right? Like you, you just can't be somewhat, some, some, some of your jobs, you know, you need this stuff like meetings and stuff like that. But a lot of what I think we're doing here in the community and, and kind of delivering really good products and, and and kind of wanting to do that, it's, it's just, it's not easy to do it in the wrong environment. So for me, working remotely, working, working in an environment that, that kind of helps that, like it, it really helps. And I think there's a lot of companies, again, that have kind of nailed this, Automatic being one, would try to do a good job at Human Made doing this. We're doing a lot of cool stuff. And I, I do credit a lot to the ability to work remote. Um, and um, through that, <coughs> I gave the talk before, which I was gonna say like, a lot of this comes down to tools and the kind of, um, uh, having the right tools to do this, and my talk was on the tools, so I can't really back anything up right now, but. Um, so the workday is torn apart um, from going to the office and not getting anything done, and before you know it's 5 p.m. Same thing that happened when I work at Time, like I'm working on EW.com, it's getting like, I don't know, 50 million uniques uh, a month uh, for the main site, and then like the, all the, the sub blocks are getting, it's crazy high traffic, and we would spend like, I don't know, three, four weeks, like trying to change like a couple links in the menu because of all the meetings and, and all this stuff and like all the emails and it's just like, I, I'm sure all of you guys can relate to that, but it's like, it's crazy to see such, such, such stuff happening still, right? Like, um, and I think we're getting better at it. I think, you know, turning to, to 
to working with remote teams. I mean, uh, at Human Made, like, a lot of the big option now is for these big clients to work with remote teams because they get stuff done, they're productive, right? So like that relationship's really cool. Like you don't have to be technically 100% remote yourself, but you know, have a relationship with, with, with that. So that works for us, you know, at, at Human Made. Um, and meaningful work is, is replaced with, with tasks. Um, right. Um, so another, another thing he goes on to say is, is that, um, you know, creative people, I feel like all of us here are creative people. Um, the long stretches of not interrupted time, and that's obviously why the reason why you guys or anyone would say all of these things, because you're, you're kind of alone um, and you have un, uninterrupted time. And if, you know, you want to have the kind of the option to get in the zone, like um, such a common thing to say, like, you know, you guys kind of like, if you're doing something productive, you just like shut everything down and put your music in and like get in the zone. And the amount of stuff that you could do when you do that and you have the option and the, the time to do that um, is, is amazing. Um, so. Um, yeah, so just common, like common, just question to think about. Like, I don't know if, if you guys are thinking about it, because um, like, how can we expect people to do to do like you know productive work if we're constantly interrupting them in the office? And again, this is like bashing the office, but it's my experience of why why I hated the office. Um, uh, so another thing, Jason goes on to to kind of um, relate this to, which is kind of a cool thing, is sleep, right? So like. If you're constantly interrupted when you're trying to sleep, like it's the worst sleep you've ever had. And you can apply it to work, right? Like if you're constantly interrupted with your work, it's gonna be the worst work you've ever done, right? So I think it's a cool correlation. Like the most and the best sleep is uninterrupted sleep, right? When you get all your full cycles. And and for work is I think the most productive work is when you have time to get into the zone um, and you have the option to do that. And the two things that, that he goes on to say is that um, why is this not Updating, right. Um, it's, it's, it's the, really what it comes down to is voluntary and involuntary distractions. And what I mean by that is like voluntary distractions are, are, are okay. They're okay. They are distractions, but they are okay and, and they should happen. Um, and involuntary distractions, things that you can't really help are things that kill productivity, right? So you don't have a choice in, in, in kind of that thing happening. And things like, you know, even at, at when I worked that time, like every site was banned. Facebook, Twitter, like I couldn't do anything. But I was constantly interrupted by meetings and emails and stuff like that. And like, that doesn't help productivity. Like, I, I mean, if, if I'm a good worker and you hired me to be a good worker and I, and I do, and I'm productive, like, these are things I'm going to do when I'm voluntary doing it, when I have the time. Like, it's not, why, why are you policing people to, to do something like that? And then kind of interrupting them all the time and, and expecting them to be productive. So, I think it's a good thing. Um, managers and meetings, again, like, uh, if you, I think there's a way you can do a really good job at this um, with proper tools. Like usually these are looked down upon. Like you will say like, why do you hate your job at the office? And it's like, oh, my manager is um, like always looking at like what I do, like micromanaging my time. Like those are bad things, right? Um, and meetings are always like at the wrong time. And um, like you call a meeting for 10 different people and you know, who has time, who has time to do, you know, to kind of drop everything they're doing to go attend, like to that meeting. Like it just never, it's never possible to do that. It's like just totally unproductive and, and, and inefficient. Um, so, but I think there are good ways to do this and ties to my talk that I had before in the workshop is proper use of tools that you guys have readily available on the internet. Um, and, and, and again, like you should talk to companies, you know, come talk to me after if you have any questions about how we work. I think Wootheems is a good company. Like we're all very open in this community and we want to share knowledge. Um, and I think there's a lot of us who are just doing stuff the traditional way. I love The Office. It's like my favorite show in the States. Um, I know the British one's good too, but I don't, I don't watch that. Um, that. That might have been me at time. I don't know. <laughs> Probably. Um, where would I put it? A tremendous, a tremendous amount of work gets done when nobody's talking to each other. It's true. Um, and some companies that kind of... Um, and again, when I say that, it's weird. Like, Obviously, communication is happening, but it's, it's really the, the part of like involuntary interruptions. That's, that's the bad thing. Um, so companies that are doing this, like there's a lot of companies, um, automatic, everyone knows automatic, but like it's, it's amazing to, to, to just know what, what they have done with so many little people, right? Like, right, there's 300 people now, right? But like when you, see, when you have a percentage like powering 22% of the web, like a majority of that really is, is like a lot of it's on WordPress.com. A lot of it is going through this company uh, in the end, you know, automatic. They're doing a lot with 300 people. Um, and they're all remote, and they're all doing like 
really productive things with that many people. Look how many huge companies like Time Magazine, with all of these, you know, Sports Illustrated people. Like there's thousands of people. There's thousands of people they outsource to 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 India, to other places, and like they don't really do anything that crazy. Like really. Um, so it's really amazing to see how efficient and productive a small team can be with kind of the 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 option to have the environment that works for for productivity. Other companies, you know, that do this: Basecamp, um, GitHub. I think WooThemes does a really good job with this. Um, so, so that's kind of it about that. So another question, kind of. So that was like the environment. Um, so I had like an introduction of what it is, the environment, and kind of now is like the profile. So what makes you know is is working remotely good for you? Maybe it's not. Like, um, I think that's. I'm not. Again, I'm not trying to say that it's good for everyone because I don't. I don't think that it is. So. One of the, I guess, um, that's pretty small. One of, one of the, um, uh, I guess, first questions to ask yourself if you want to work remote is like, is what is your goal or what is your intent to, to kind of work from home? Like, is it just to work from home and be cool and like do nothing at home? Like, that's obviously not the reason to work from home or work remotely, right? Like, the reason why you should want to work from home is kind of, the the uh, the idea that you know that you'll be more productive and perform and put out more good work from home, right? That should be the only reason. It shouldn't be like because you want to work in your pajamas or or something like that. Like I think that's that's kind of stupid. Like it should be because you want to be more productive and you know that you can be because you're wasting time at the office or or wherever it may be. Like for me right now, working from home is is the opposite. Like I don't want to work from home because I have all of these involuntary. Interaction. So I'm trying to start a co-working space in Norway um, to kind of find that place, find that right environment. Um, again, it is remote, but it's it's not home. It's not like you know that's where I want to be. Um, again, it's not tying into the, kind of the same thing. Where are you, where are your rewards and goals? I think some of your jobs um, might not like you might not what you do might not measure productivity the same way like a developer would or a designer or delivering a project like it might just be daily task and if if you wouldn't be rewarded for more productivity in that sense like working remote probably isn't for you um so you know the office and that the whole thing with meetings and the traditional office like it still is there is a place for that um so good question to, to think about because if it's not that working from home won't be for you and you'll, you'll be you know you'll say it sucks or it's miserable like Right, you won't be doing a good job. Again, it really comes down to are your interruptions at work voluntary? Um, they should be. Um, weird thing that, that also Jason goes on to say is like that the Twitter and the Facebook is, is kind of a weird way to say it too. It's like the smoking break of our time, right? Like nobody had a problem, you know. Nobody still had a problem with someone taking a five, ten minute smoke break. Like they don't, right? But if you're going to stand outside and just like look around, like that's a problem, right? But like getting on Facebook and Twitter for five minutes, what's the problem with that? Like, it's not, it's it's voluntary, and again, it's it's you're going to be productive when you get back to work and you get in the zone, right? If the if the environment is right. <coughs> so, change your environment. Like uh, again, I want you guys to take away from my talk is is if this stuff speaks to you and like you you can see that you'll be more productive in. Not necessarily working remotely, but maybe just changing things up. Um, I really wish that I, I could kind of uh, tie my two talks together, but I think a lot of this stuff, changing your environment, could be the tools that you guys use at work. You know, getting away from traditional email and using something like P2 um, for, for all of your communication and, and, and a hip chat for even, I think a lot of this stuff works great for internal companies at the office, having intranets and stuff like that. Like that, that really helps with productivity instead of like interrupting someone voluntary, uh, involuntarily. So look into that. I hopefully I can get the slides up. Um, so you guys, there's plenty of stuff. Just look it up on Google. Like I think, again, a lot of these things like at WordCamps is like a lot of stuff that we say. I try to say stuff that's that's more sharing knowledge than like a lot of stuff you can Google. You can Google a lot of stuff about like tools and WordPress to make you know project management or anything you know easier. Like just look it up. There's a lot, and just ask each other. Um, so I crossed out Casual Friday. That's like a really weird thing. Like even at that time. Hopefully no one works for time. It's like I'm like bashing the company. <laughs> um, casual Friday, like dressing dressing down doesn't help productivity. You're still in the office, like because I'm wearing jeans, I'm going to be more productive. No, it doesn't make it doesn't make any sense. I just want to go home more. Like it just is weird. So I don't I cross it out. It doesn't really work. I think the option to work from anywhere, like think of anywhere being like this option to work from the right environment that works best for you. I think that's the most important thing about working remotely. Um, so 
make your space, wherever that may be, um, in an office, at home, uh, at a coffee shop, on the train, in a plane, um, a place where productivity happens. I think that's, that's the, kind of the key of my, my talk. Um, and I think making use of a place like a co-working space, like, I don't necessarily struggle with this, maybe you guys do, like, for some, for some people, like, a co-working space might be a lot of, a lot of involuntary distractions just because there's a lot of people there and maybe people you know. Like, if, I would try to make it a place where, where it wasn't that. Um, I don't know if, if uh, I think after a few times, maybe to a co-working space, like, you kind of get out of the whole greetings and you know you want and you kind of can get in the zone, so. Not necessarily a co-working space is the best thing. There's a lot of really cool co-working spaces here in Cape Town. Um, I just, I haven't gone to, we, we walked to a couple on Sunday, but they were closed, but I would make use of them, even if it's on, you know, a weekend or something where you guys can get in the zone and, and work on, on, on stuff. Um, again, too, this could apply to, like, you know, stuff you guys are doing outside of your daily job. It's just really productivity, right? So if you guys have cool ideas you want to work on, like, you could use a lot of this to kind of, you know, you don't do that. Um, so the bottom line is that uh, not everyone is in the right position to work from home, right? Um, I think that I am aligned well with kind of the way that, that, that I work and, and the job that I have, um, but it isn't for everyone. And, and take everything that I, you know, kind of said, um, and, and if this doesn't happen, then nothing's going to work. I think communication is, is everything. Open, clear communication, tools that make communication happen with, 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 you know, with people you work with and clients you work with. That's the most important thing. So working remotely, like if you are bad at communicating and, and not like obsessive about being connected and communicating, like it's not going to work. Like you need to have communication. That's number one. That's number one in every aspect of, I think, of life is that communication is, is everything and the, you know, the idea to build trust around that. That's all I have, so thank you. Great, thank you so much, Scott. Uh, we're going to open up the floor to some questions for Scott. Uh, does anyone have anything they'd like to ask him? Sure. So, so, so hot desk. We're just probably the same same thing I'm saying as co-working space. There's plenty. There's like I looked on a site on on, on I just googled you know co-working spaces in Cape Town, and there are different types. There are some that are like exclusive, where like you say you have to pay uh, every month to be a part of it and use it. And that's more for like startups, I think. But there are ones that you can just do a daily drop-in or an hourly drop-in. There's plenty. I think there was four or five that showed up that are in just you know just downtown. I don't live here, but I I did some research. Um, any of you guys working in like a drop-in co-working space? Cool. Maybe you can connect or something. And and I, I think it's a it's a great environment. It really is. So that's awesome. And that's what I'm trying to start really in, in Norway for for me. Thank you very much. Uh, someone at the back, you had a question. There you are. Uh, yeah, hi. Uh, so I have the following question. Um, we're also a remote team and we're facing the following problem. Um, sometimes for stuff that could kind of be completed in a matter of hours, it just takes quite some time be because, you know, there's a task and multiple people have to work on it. And then it's like this, you know, the huge loop and, and you have your favorite space and time and they, somebody else has his favorite p space and time. And you know something that could be done in two hours is then done in two days because everybody waits for the next person in line to perform some stuff. Um, any tips on improving that? Yeah, so that's that's um, that's not really something we deal with with at at, at human made particularly, um, mostly because the the projects that we're doing are are very large and span you know maybe uh, three months. Um, for, for large projects. I could see that being an issue for, for Codable, right? Because maybe it is small things that need to be done very quickly. 
um, we probably dealt with the same thing at Wuthium for stuff, right? Like it, it does happen. Um, I don't know the, the, the best solution for that, like I think that's one of the, one, maybe one of the downfalls of, of, of having a remote team and being distributed is, is that, that time gap. I think there are ways that you can kind of, there are tools that you can kind of, I think, again, it's, it really is communication and kind of the obsessive to be connected and, and, and uh, if you don't have that and you don't have that trust and, and you're not overly like obsessive about being connected, you're going to have that issue, like these like delays and, and these these times. So like we're we're spanned across, you know, uh, very a lot, a lot of time zones, and it's very rarely well, I don't know what what somebody else is doing. And it's not like obsessive in the sense that like I'm just sit, like people are just sitting online and and just like checking if anyone's talking. It's just like simple stuff like a status in HipChat that you're there or you're not there, or an update on P2 like what you're doing, things like that. Like everyone plans if they know what's happening, right? Like so. If something came up that you needed to be done in two hours, you knew that that guy wasn't wasn't around, right? So communication, obsessive about being connected and knowing people what you're doing, like what you're doing, whether it be you're there connected or you're not, like then you know, as say a project manager or someone who needs to deliver something, like not to to wait for that person, right? So I think that's probably the, the best tip that I can give you. Cool. We got time for one last question. <coughs> ah. Yes, sir. How do you guys handle, at Human Made, how do you guys handle, um, so l what what Thomas was saying about my favorite time and another person's favorite time, um, their team sort of need to collaborate most often, more often than not. How do you guys handle collaboration, uh, working remotely? Yeah, being yeah. yeah, of course. So. Um, there are there are uh, uh, um, you know specifically at, at Human Made and how we work. Um, I could I could you know speak for no two is there are. I wish there was more of that, more of that more of the like kind of co-working feel. Like that's one of the things the downsides about working remote is like. Well, for example, I lo I really want to use the the app Squiggle. I think it's awesome. Like you have I don't know if you guys have heard of it. You can see like who you're working with. Like but it's like not live video that updates every five minutes. And just like the feeling of working with someone, like it's cool. And, and to have that time too, like where you, so you both had to, had to collaborate on something, like that's kind of hard to manage if you are, had your favorite times, you know, my favorite times in the morning, your favorite times at night, how do we collaborate? Again, it's being obsessive about communication and being like, so how do we made, like we use GitHub to track like all development, like our GitHub issues or anything like that, like it's very detailed. So like when I pass something off to you, like you know what's going on, Why, there's no reason I need to be there. But being like really obsessive about details is really important. Um, and that helps, so that's again, open, clear, detailed communication is probably the best thing that you can do. And then you won't have that issue because why, why do you need me if I, if I really detail this out? And of course there is, the, you know, people do like, that's a skill to kind of develop. Like it, if you work that into your, your work like workflow, like you get good at it and it just works. So that's like, I, I stepped into human made, they had that working already and it just, it works really well. Um, and, and I'm not just like, I'm not just saying that it does like they, you know, fine tune these things and it, and it does work because you have a pain point and then you figure out how to, how to make it work. And communication again is, it, it is everything. Cool. Great. Thank you guys so much. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. Thank you.